यूनिट टू स्किल फॉर एम्प्लॉयमेंट वन वर्क प्लेस लिसनिंग वर्क प्लेस लिसनिंग इज अ टाइप ऑफ एक्टिव लिसनिंग दट इज जनरली एम्प्लॉयड इन अ प्रोफेशनल एनविरोनमेंट वर्क प्लेस लिसनिंग इंक्लूड्स अंडरस्टैंडिंग द लिसनिंग प्रोसेस दे फॉर परसेप्शन interpretation evaluation and action and its barriers that hamper the flow of that process effective listening in the workplace steps for effective listening make a deliberate effort to listen the conversations Hearing is a natural phenomenon but to listen and then grasp is something which we need to train ourselves learn to maintain eye contact with speaking to a person eye contact is a easy way to show the speaker that our concentration is in the conversation and that we are able to understand and adapt to the conversation identify and react to the emotion and tone of the conversation a patient approach is very important to develop effective listening skills wait for the speaker to complete the conversation and then speak up to give any suggestions or any contradictions make sure that we don't interrupt the meeting make sure that we acknowledge the speaker or an orator at a workplace one way in which we can do this with simple nods and short phrases of acceptance this little effort on our part will convey to the speaker that she or he is being listened to show some interest in the conversation or discussion that is going on your body language plays an important role in making you an effective listener in the workplace sit in a position you are comfortable in order to make less movements maintain confident eye contact and modify your expressions based on the emotions of the speaker's tone benefits of effective listening skills in the workplace effective listening skills lead to effective communication miscommunication and misinterpretation are always blamed upon bad presentation skills and the responsibility falls as much on the speaker as on the listener it is the responsibility of the listener to listen carefully and understand the message developing good listening skills will help in the spread of fewer misunderstanding at the workplace an effective listener can prevent misunderstanding and can set back what would otherwise have been a miscommunication irrespective of the quality of the written or spoken message an effective listener will be able to develop healthy and strong interpersonal relationships at the workplace therefore it is important to indulge in effective listening practices to convey to co-workers and superiors that their speech is important and respected by us 
Effective listening skills will not only improve your work environment but will also help in our personal growth. Listening is one of the best way to learn. Therefore, a good listener can grasp knowledge and new ideas from the conversation. Listening skills will provide us with immense knowledge and will help us to develop and grow continuously. Developing effective listening skills through practice of effective listening activities will also help you in developing emotional intelligence at the workplace. If all the employees start practicing effective listening, there will be no conflicts in the conversation, which is a good sign for the growth of the organization. Documentation Documentation is preparing a documents provided on paper or online or media or digital media. Documentation is distributed nowadays via websites, software, products and other online documentation. Writing documentation is a different form of writing than most people have experience with technical writing is an art that does not come naturally. Writing documentation will prepare us as a better technical writer which is a useful skill to have as a programmer. Writing also becomes easier over time. Keeping your projects documentation will keep you writing at a reasonable cadence. Important key factors of writing documentation. First one, avoid a passive voice. Using of passive voice spoils the effective documentation. Passive voice reduces clarity of documentation its stability and the effectiveness and rightness of the writing. For example, the server was installed represents the passive voice while the technician installed the server represents the active voice. The passive voice is more common in most documentation because it is an easier, slappier way of writing. Writing in the passive voice is highly harmful to effective documentation, especially to process related documentation where it is essential to understand. To improve your documentation immediately. Use the passive voice grammar. Check function in word to review your documentation and to change. Passive sentences into clearer, sharper, active sentences. Use simple visuals to keep your reader. We might not be a graphic artist, but we can improve our documentation quickly through using simple visuals. Take advantage of the many canned shapes and smart art in order to add a little punch to our documentation to better engage our audience. To improve your documentation immediately, create visuals in our documentation.
to illustrate our key messages, replace blocks of text and to hold our readers attention. Use great titles and bullets. Remember, your audience generally wants to apply as little as energy as possible. When reading our work, they will just skim our document looking for the main points. Your reader might even make a decision about your work just by reading the table of contents. So, when assessing your documentation, it's helpful if the entire idea of our work is communicated by the headers and bullets alone. Cultivated are acronyms and buzzwords. There are perhaps nothing more annoying when it comes to documentation than walking into a project or into a new organization and to be unable to understand a single paragraph in the document. In most cases, acronyms and buzzwords actually annoy our reader through hindering her ability to grasp a key messages. Avoid using excessive acronyms and buzzwords whenever possible. In many cases, we should define acronyms and frequently use words in a well thought out glossary at the beginning of our documents or as part of our documentation library to improve our documentation immediately. Learn to tame our use of excessive acronyms and buzzwords. If we need to use them, then make sure that we define them upfront at the beginning of our documents or documentation library. Use the reperformance standard. The reperformance standard states that the documentation must enable a user to reperform the related task or process, that is, the documentation must have sufficient detail and communicate with enough clarity through its text or visuals or as a standalone document to allow the user to execute the steps. The documentation process. The documentation process consists of the following five important steps. First one, capturing. Second one, structuring. Third one, presenting. Fourth one, communicating. And the fifth one, storing and maintaining. Types of documentation. Smartphone, synchronization, photo documentation, video documentation, animation documentation, video gaming documentation, tons of new cool apps. Conclusion Documentation practices as we know them today are not always well liked at work because they are well dull. But there is no reason that documentation practices need not be dull. They just have some catching up to do with the rest of our lives. Finally, we came to the end of our second unit. Hope you understood the classes and notes. Thank you.